we're back at APOR in New Orleans with Jay Levy, uh, who many of you know and recognize as the CEO of Survey USA, uh, whose polls we uh, post and talk about all the time. Uh, Jay comes to APOR, uh, like many uh, professional survey researchers, and I haven't had the chance to ask this of others, but why do you come to APOR? What is the benefit for Survey USA? Imagine if you were a baseball player and you could go to one place and Brooks Robinson would be teaching a fielding clinic in one room and Bob Gibson would be teaching a pitching clinic in another room and Ted Williams would be teaching a hitting clinic in a third room and you had the chance to go one to the other to the other and literally learn and perfect your craft and then there would be sessions on the texture of a baseball and the weight of a bat and the field conditions and literally every element of the game being analyzed and dissected by the people who were the tops in their field. So I come here because every conference I'm smarter when I leave than when I got here. Now, in my uh, attendance here and, and also just in following uh, the things written by some of the folks who are very prominent here, they often react to the IVR, interactive voice response surveys that you do in, an, in a frequently, not only in a negative way, sometimes in a mocking way. Um, yet I see you here every year how does that how does that work how does that feel I mean what 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 do you take away from that experience well I, I wish it weren't so and I wish it were the case that our research could be evaluated dispassionately and I think with the advent of the web with you and with Charles Franklin and with some other people who are divorced from you there's a great deal of independent analysis that's going on about our work and that's all we would ask is that people look at our work and try and evaluate it non-emotionally and dispassionately and where there's room to criticize us and there's probably plenty of room we are so open to learning from that criticism but what we would ask is that you not dismiss out of hand um, an entire body of work because it happens to present an inconvenient truth to a preset paradigm that you may have come in with and that I think unfortunately is what happened 12 to 14 years ago and for a lot of people it's hard for them to get that preset paradigm out of their head let me change, shift gears for a minute. Very different question. We, we, uh, we just did an interview with Sarah Dutton from CBS about a presentation she did on effect of the race and gender of interviewer. You don't have a live interviewer. Um, have you looked at that? Have you looked at the race and gender of the voice that you introduced the survey with? Uh, because I, I know, and I, I'm not sure if our readers know, your surveys are typically introduced by the anchor uh, the familiar voice of the anchor from the television station that sponsors your work. Exactly. So for the last 16 years, what we've done is used the local TV news anchor to actually secure respondent cooperation. And what that means is when you answer your ringing home telephone, you're going to hear the voice of somebody who you may have grown up listening to. And you may be able to identify that person. Well, certainly you'll be able to tell if it's a man or a woman. You may be able to know if it's a white man or a black woman, et cetera. When we first started in 1993, one of the first races we did was in Virginia. And the TV station we had had a very courtly southern white gentleman who was sort of the South personified, and a young black female anchor woman. And they were working the news together side by side. So we conducted research in both voices simultaneously because the very first question you would want to ask on a contest like that was, well, did it matter whether the southern white gentleman uh, who was older or the young African-American woman, anchor woman, asked the questions? We did not see any difference. That doesn't mean our line of inquiry was closed. And absolutely in 2008, as we have been um, asked by APOR to participate in the analysis of New Hampshire and other primary polling, one of the things, one of the questions and lines of inquiry that they had was, well, who were your interviewers and were they white or black? So what we were able to do, since we know how every word is spoken to our respondents, was to be able to identify, okay, in this geography, the respondent cooperation was secured by a white male, if, it, if in fact it was white male, and the interviewer was a white female, and we were able to literally map that. So we turned all of that data over to APOR and to Mike Trogett's committee, and I'm sure they actually may be able to tell us things we don't even know about interviewer effect, but we were completely upfront in turning that data over, and actually we're fascinated to see what we learned. Very good. Well, uh, uh, what that means is that uh, Survey USA is one of the five of the roughly 30 uh, uh, research organizations that were asked to provide data that have fully complied with APOR's request. So I point that out for our, our readers. Uh, thank you, Jay, Pleasure, uh, for Pollster.com. This is Mark Blumenthal.